Good day, ladies and gents, uh, fellow traders. Welcome to Precious Times. Uh, we're here, as usual, to discuss precious metals, mostly gold, of course. It's by far the most important asset that we're uh, pretty much covering here. Um, let us look at the market. We, we did discuss the non-farm payrolls. We did discuss the NFP, knowing that it's going to be a, a pretty good uh, fundamental report for us to trade, especially on, 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 uh, on gold last week. But we did discuss the NFP in, in advance. We actually uh, caught it spot on, which was, uh, which was great. It was a, was a great thing for everybody. Um, as well for myself uh, and for all the traders that follow this of course now let's look uh, how did the nfp move uh, how did the nfp make the market move why did gold move that way and of course maybe been uh, looking um, at a couple of future trends before we go into any analysis as usual we will um, uh, look at the two most important things that move the markets and we're looking at supply and demand imbalance yeah an imbalance between buyers and sellers supply and demand and of course by one of the most important thing the level of novelty of your common traders because in the end of the day, the level of novelty of your retail traders does make, uh, on one hand, certain bank traders uh, uh, decide and think when to buy and when to sell a certain uh, uh, possible market. Uh, when we, in, in, in the end of the day, we do find ourselves in a position in a moment in time that fundamentals are extremely crucial, especially when it comes to uh, heavy metals. So once again, supply and demand, ladies and gents, it's a uh, macroeconomical model of price determination. Whoever studied economics, I'm sure that they know the definition of supply and demand, but we will, uh, we will mention it once more. So it's an economical model of price determination into a market. And it stands behind the point that in a competitive market, such as the foreign exchange or a stock market, commodity trading, etc., etc., uh, the price of a unit will vary. The, uh, the unit price of a good will vary up to a certain moment in price, of course, in time, where the quantity supplied by producers equals the quantity demanded by consumers. In other words, buyers and sellers. And that's when we find ourselves economically in an equili economical, equilibrium in, uh, uh, eco economical equilibrium between price and quantity. Depending on the four different rules of supply and demand, imbalance, you have shortages or surpluses in supply and or demand, or one of them stays the same, the other one has a surplus or a shortage, and we have have great moves onto the market such as rallies and spikes especially on gold 40 50 dollar spikes and rallies are actually not that rare at all um, but considering the fact that we spoke about it before the non-farm payroll we have to look at where we find ourselves right now and we do find ourselves in a declining volume of trading between the period of a uh, uh, transition between thanksgiving and the christmas holidays thus the volume decreasing is does uh, looking at the volume being decreased it does look at much less movements and much, much less to actually move the actual market itself, which brings us to, uh, again, to the saying that we always say here on, on Precious Times that it's all about the level of novelty of your common trader. So the volume does decrease. Uh, now, after the Thanksgiving weekend, if you look at it that way, the European market opened slightly uh, ahead of the U.S. session simply because it was still Sunday in the, within the United States of America. We looked at the gold spiking. Yeah, it rallied $35 within the European session. New York opens, plunges $40. Now, you guys tell me when you see a 40 to 50 move rally or drop, yeah, being corrected in the same exact day. But not only that, fundamentally and level of novelty speaking regarding your 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 uh, your, your traders, it's very important to understand how in the same within the same day, depending on the session, the level of novelty change and the actual uh, the actual purchase or sell of that particular particular product changed. European session market took thirty five bucks. American section market plunged. $40. Very, very important thing to understand. When we usually look at a 40 to 50 buck uh, tank or rally uh, in one day, we should see the same move uh, 24 hours to 48 hours later for that particular move retrace, but not in the same day. So it just goes to show how much impact each market in its own uh, uh, has to this particular asset and how less volume we need for this asset to actually uh, uh, occur and, and, and to witness $40 and $50 uh, rallies and drops in its spikes, um, in its price. So it's very, very important. Other things that uh, made us look, because we are looking at a, at a downtrend, a uh, major downtrend in gold. In the end of the day, the bottom, the psychological level of 1180 drop uh, uh, broken. Okay, we all agreed on the fact that it's going to be broken, and it did indeed, um, obviously. So we're going to definitely have to keep that in mind. But at this particular moment in time, I would like to say also what other fundamental factors would show us go to the downside. We're looking at the Mario Draghi, looking for more money printing. We're looking for more quantitative easing. Of course, that makes you look at a much lower equilibrium in price for gold. Um, uh, there are actually certain econ economists out there, some of the biggest economists in the world, they're looking at a, at a drop in gold at, uh, at below the $1,000 mark. 
once again below the thousand dollar mark so let's just look um, um, to the technicals as well see exactly what entries we had and why yeah uh, and we take it from there considering the fact that we find ourselves let's go on a slightly macroeconomical view we we discussed this beautiful uh, we discussed this beautiful um, six and a half year spike we dis discussed this beautiful six and a half year spike on gold on a monthly view yeah and at the same time this move here for gold to retrace to the actual 61.8 percent it's exactly on the 61.8 percent there for the gold to retrace to the 61.8 percent we needed three and a half years yeah so we already discussed the double bottom here and it was a very big question mark back in the day we were looking at uh, a couple of months back we were looking at uh, uh, if, if this particular double bottom, would, double, double bottom would hold, then we would be looking at a much more bullish gold. We were very, very, uh, we were very, very unsure to be looking at a bullish gold. I mean, we, we were always looking at the uh, bears uh, being much more into there, um, winning the battle. So let's be looking at a couple of supply and demand levels and just simply understand why gold move at the, moved in the way that it did. We, we witnessed here on a four hour, and I'm going to move it on a daily as well, yeah? A perfect drop, yeah? An institutional drop, everybody can obviously agree that this is an institutional drop, yeah? Banks and institutions did this. We have an equilibrium in price, and of course we've got an institutional spike. This was the lowest low of 1131-ish, yeah? 1131.14, we have a huge spike in it. Market comes back to it, fills in the bank's orders, market leaves, comes back to it again, fills in the bank's orders, leaves again, comes back to us on the NFP day and brings. Everybody that was with us in our last episode, I'm sure that they're laughing and loving right now because they had actually had an entry of gold buy at 11.50. They closed their gold uh, uh, trade at 12.29 today. Why did we close our gold? Why did we enter 11.50? Because considering this drop base rally here, this beautiful institutional banking level here, it was pretty logic to understand and believe that certain bankers institutions would purchase gold here would have pending orders to the buy side and the only level the only level that would um, show us let's say a slight uh, a supply zone would be here this huge rally base beautiful drop yeah a weekly and then we can look on a daily level as well and we have a beautiful drop base drop which would be in this particular moment in time so this beautiful drop base drop, okay, we find ourselves in this particular moment in time, it could be a beautiful selling opportunity from here, considering that we have the other levels below here, yeah, the other demand levels below here, we're looking either this one to be filled in, beautiful, and we're looking at a one hour, Let's see at 30 minutes just to make sure that we don't have any other levels on our way down. We do have another level here on the 30 minutes on our way down. So this may, we may encounter some resistance regarding demand levels here, but I wouldn't be that uh, much concerned within this area. Yeah, from 12.22 to 12.08, we're looking at beautiful, beautiful buy opportunities, even at 12.08 itself. That is a macro, mic, macro view of gold. Let's remember the fact that once again, the psychological level of 1180 uh, has been broken. So we are looking at a bearish gold. We are looking, fundamentally speaking and technically speaking, at a, well, technically speaking, we're looking at a beginning of an uptrend. So we're looking at a bullish gold, but with a very strong bearish momentum. On a much shorter time frame, if we're looking at a daily, it feels really, really good to be looking at a bearish gold. Keeping that in mind, always look for your supply and demand levels. Make sure that your fundamentals make a lot of sense. Have a great one. Subscribe to our show and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you.